What is going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Create You Experience. Now remember we are on audio and video here on YouTube and what we do here is we jump into an actual experience for you and then jump into the actual podcast with the guest of my choosing. And today we are joined by, come join us, Alexa Stanko. Hello. Now Alexa is someone that's very, very special to me and unique. Not only has she inspired thousands and thousands of women all around the world, but she also has an incredible story. And even beyond that, what she does now with gut health and everything is so, so special. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna jump into the grocery store. You're gonna learn a little bit about how to shop on a budget. Then we're gonna maybe cook something up small. Something small. Very, very small. And then and jump quick. right in quick. That's very important. Effective and efficient. So without further ado, let's, let's get go. going. Okay, so we're gonna go to a place, King's Super. This is accessible to anyone. You don't have to go to Whole Foods, a fresh market, any specialty market like that. You'll be able to find everything that you need right here. So let's go. Okay, so when it comes to healthy eating, the most important thing is just picking foods that feel good for you. Feel good for your body, feel good for your gut specifically. Uh, you're gonna wanna stick to whole nutrient-dense foods with as little ingredients as possible. But again, like I said, most importantly, things that feel good for your body. Um, minimal ingredients. So for example, you don't want Captain Crunch because <laughs> <laughs> when you read the ingredients, we have uh, corn flour, sugar, oat flour, brown sugar, palm oil. All those things are pretty inflammatory. So what's an alternative to that? Like something for um, cereal? So this is Captain Crunch. Um, there's a lot of sugar. What about so granola? Like if someone says, hey, granola, should they should they get it? Or like is there? I always recommend no matter what item it is, you want to pick it up, turn it over, and read the ingredient labels. Okay, so if you're on the go and you're wanting something like chips or a snack or something quick, rather than going for the candy, you have rice cake. So something you can do is like, for example, just like a brown rice cake, minimally processed, minimal ingredients. You can throw some avocado on there. You can put some everything bagel seasoning. You can do some like honey or peanut butter. Super quick, super efficient. You can throw it together in literally five seconds. And it's a lot better than the processed, fried, uh, <laughs> just terrible crap. So that is what I'd recommend. Okay, so definitely a healthy alternative for a snack would be nuts and seeds. So oftentimes it's pretty expensive uh, if you get the prepackaged ones and things like that. So I would recommend actually just going to one of these slots if you have access to that. Um, I would recommend things like almonds, cashews, pecans, things along those lines. You may want to avoid peanuts just because they're not always in the best conditions. There's a lot of mold in the factories uh, and sometimes it's oftentimes inflammatory. So those are the nuts that I would recommend. Uh, if you're looking for a little bit extra flavor, you can always get the dry roasted nuts. Make sure that it's not roasted with any inflammatory oils such as palm oil and sunflower oil. Make sure it's dry roasted and that will just add a little bit of extra flavor to the nuts that you decide to choose. So when it comes to dairy, I know a lot of you have a hard time giving up milk, milk products, things along those lines. The easiest thing is just to find a swap. So my favorite is actually cashew milk. I make sure to get the unsweetened, so you don't want any sugar in it. So get the unsweetened uh, cashew or almond milk. Be sure again to read the ingredients, uh, but this is not inflammatory such as dairy. You know, modern day dairy contains so many hormones and just so much BS that you don't want inside of your body. The way that they process the milk, the way that the cows are treated, all those things aren't the best. So go for the alternative. Uh, and I like cashew because again, it's just super creamy. So if you're really looking to, to fully replace the milk without feeling like you're missing something, I would go for this one. Warning, please be aware of protein bars. They are super manipulating. They tell you that they're good for you just because they're high in protein. But please, I implore you, read the label. So we're gonna go for the Cliff Bars, <laughs> my favorite. So <laughs> with the Cliff Bars, please, please, please read the ingredients. So for example, they're hiding them from you actually. They're trying to hide the ingredients. Can't even have access to them. They're trying to hide it. Okay. We have organic brown rice syrup as the first ingredient, which that's not good. Um, rolled oats, soy protein isolate, cane sugar, cane sugar, soybeans. <sighs> my heart, <laughs> it's hurting. <laughs> What I would recommend, actually my favorite ones, are the RX bars. I don't know if you've actually seen these before, but the, all of the ingredients contained in the bar is literally on the front. So we have three egg whites, six almonds, four cashews, two dates, and no bullshit. So that's what I'd recommend. These are my favorite. Um, and it's just a clean, pure bar as opposed to all the other ones. Okay, so when it comes to meats, poultry, beef, all of those things, please buy organic. It is worth the extra couple of dollars because all of these animals 
contain so many hormones unless they're raised properly. So you wanna go for grass-fed, free-range, organic food. Uh, you wanna avoid vegetarian fed because that still means that they might be fed uh, corn, which is inflammatory, or things that they're not supposed to be eating. You want the animals to be feeding on the things that they naturally eat. So for example, for, for beef, you know, you're gonna want to get, um, to get grass-fed, natural, all of those things and then for chicken uh, you want to make sure that they're eating bugs and grass like they naturally do so you're going to want to get free range that would be like this so organic <laughs> organic free range chicken so that's what you're going to want to go for all right guys so we are back home went to the grocery store and we picked up a quick meal that we are going to prepare for you so we have some lamb we have some peppers some onions, some garlic, some seasonings. You're gonna learn everything about this specific recipe yourself so you can cook on your own. In addition to that, we also have this amazing air fryer. Yeah, this thing is a beast. Just learned about it today, or the past couple days. And basically, you get away from all the nasty crap that comes along with frying anything, and you get to cook something that's literally from so air. And it's so fast, from air, hot air. It basically the air just circulates in the air fryer, crisping it up, making it super juicy and yummy um, without all the terrible oil that you usually yeah. consume from frying. So it's, it's really easy, so that's what we're gonna do. Yeah, so let's jump into it. everything together and you put it in the air fryer and it's good and ready to go all right so we're gonna try this see how it tastes wow amazing damn right <laughs> this really is amazing like I'm not even kidding guys girls I don't know where you are Go buy an air fryer, it's gonna save you so much time. The food is incredible. That's your experience for today. Now let's jump on over to the podcast and dig on deep. Let's roll. Hey, my name is Brennan Myers and welcome to the Create You Experience where we ignite your breakthrough, create your experience and bring your vision to life. Uh, I can't sit around and wait till it goes right Cause I've been hopping over obstacles my whole life I got a vision and I know it's about to take flight I'm dedicated to growth, I keep my mind right I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable Anything in my way, I'ma break through Lights, camera, action, take two Can't worry about what they do, you gotta create you Welcome to the Create You Experience I'm just gonna get started with this podcast by saying I'm wearing glasses and they were not prescribed to me. Yeah, they were not prescribed to me and I feel like I'm in a spaceship. It's very interesting. <laughs> I, have, I have headphones on and I have these, it, it's okay. I just feel like a spaceship and I just wanted to start it off with that bang. Anyways, let's jump right in. <laughs> Today we are accompanied. Is that a good word? It's a great word. By a beautiful, beautiful woman, incredible person, very influential and very knowledgeable. Her name is Alexa Stanko, and I'm gonna throw the fit in there just because it's kind of cool. I like the <laughs> Alexa Stanko fit. I also know you by your Instagram. And she has been inspiring ladies all around the world for a very long time now. She has an incredible story. And by the way, if you are listening, we are also on YouTube. We're on all audio platforms. And before this podcast even begins, we have an experience, and today, what did we do, Alexa? We we cooked some little Mediterranean shish kebabs. Yeah, shish kebabs. So good. I'm so into shish shish shish, 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 shish kebabs. <laughs> and we also went into the grocery store and really were able to dive into shopping on a budget. And we didn't go to the best place ever because you don't need that that type of stuff bougie in your ass. life. Yeah, that bougie, bougie ass, ass bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways. Remember, you can go down to, into the show notes, the description of YouTube, and 
bring on seven incredible gifts for absolutely free when you just review the podcast on iTunes. It's as simple as that. Um, and yeah, welcome to the Create You Experience, Alexa. Hello. Thank you so much for that intro. I'm very excited. Uh, we had some fun before in the grocery store, just yeah. going through the aisles and, and just giving. <laughs> just going through the aisles. It was fucking aisles. great. <laughs> that's, literally, that's what I do, though. Like, go to Whole Foods and just walk up and down the aisles and pick out random shit to buy. Really? And then easily your your bill is like 120 bucks on random shit. That's, that's what happens. That's very interesting. Yeah, I usually only buy soap when I go into, like, Whole Foods. That's all I buy. Like fancy soap. Yeah, fancy soap. Do you use you know, it? Just buy it. Yeah, no, I just buy it, and I just have it <laughs> stacked in my closet with my sun, with all my glasses, my non-prescribed glasses. <laughs> it's like glasses, have, glasses, glasses, bar soap, soap. <laughs> glasses, soap, <laughs> glasses. Anyway, so Alexa and I, um, we have a great relationship. Do, do we have a great relationship? I, I I think so. Okay, good. We're we're on a, we're on the same note. That's yeah, awesome. And then, um, and she really loves when I play the guitar. Isn't that true? I do. Yeah, today you do. <laughs> and one thing that's so incredible about Alexa, and let, you know, all jokes aside, is what she's created in her life and what she's been through in her life. And I would love for you to quickly, very quickly, you have about three seconds now, <laughs> uh, in short, kind of say like where you came from to where you are now. Like that part of it, ladies and gentlemen, you, you really need to stay tuned with this. Go ahead. It's just wild, especially because it happens so quickly. You know, um, I, I'm right now, I'm 21, you know, and, and that even is weird to, for me to just say that out loud, knowing where I'm at right now compared to where I, to, compared to where I was. Um, so I competitively swam my entire life. Um, that was all I knew, everything, competitive swimming, um, practices six, seven days a week. That was like all I knew. Um, in that, when I was 15, I fractured my foot and due to that injury, I was out of the sport um, because I knew nothing else. Other than swimming, um, I, I didn't know where to turn. I didn't know what to do. So I turned to just terrible things when I was 15. Just Terrible like, things like what? Like just smoking weed and drinking and just fucking around guys and going to all these shows and all these raves. And like, cause I, I didn't, literally didn't know anybody, anything else other than swimming. And cause mm. I had no other outlet. It was in the wrong people, the wrong relationships, the wrong, the wrong things. Uh, in that I gained... 40, 50 pounds on my little frame, just super, super quickly going from a swimmer's appetite, uh, which is practice. Thousands of calories. I, I, I get yeah. a lot of practice. Okay. Absolutely. And um, I became extremely depressed. I was involved in a super toxic relationship. Right. Um, to the point where I, I was suicidal. I was going to kill myself with this other person. Like it was, it was bad. And um, I, I just played the victim. You know, I, I played the victim in my life with a lot of shit that was going on at home too. Uh, growing up with my mother as an alcoholic and just a lot of things going on at home. Um, I literally didn't didn't know where to turn, especially when you're growing up at that age. You don't know what to do. You know, you're never taught how to cope with these situations when you're in them. Right. Um, so you, you do what feels right at that time. And at that time, it was toxic people, toxic things. Right. And so you went so you went through that such a whole situation. You got into fitness. You really were, were diving into that whole fitness journey. You were like, whoa, what's going on? Like, I, I need to change. I need to transform. And then you took more steps in the right direction. But at the same time, what did you do? So I finally had to take control back of my life. Um, and I got into fitness and exercise, lost the weight, and then became fearful of gaining it back. It was like I had this extreme fear of becoming what I was again. So bulimia is, yeah, so, is what you started to experience? Exactly. So I, in fear of gaining the weight back, I became bulimic, binging, purging. Like I wouldn't wish what I went through upon my worst enemy. Yeah. Binging. Because like you, were, you, were, you were dying as you were living. Literally. I was dying. Like I used to work at Denny's actually. I used to serve at Denny's. I really like Denny's. But I'm more of an IHOP guy. I don't like Denny's anymore. Mm, I used to. Interesting. Yeah. Do you want to go to Denny's after this? No, I'm kidding. Um, that's <laughs> oh, you can eat pancakes that's, for $3? Uh, okay. Okay. It's great. Uh, anyway. <laughs> anyways, no, but it's like even working there, just having the access to that food. Like I would have the chef cook me things, whatever I wanted. I'd sit in my fucking car after my shift got out and I'd binge and purge in my car every single day. Wow. Because that was the only thing that I had control of over my life. And that was the way that I coped was through binging, through purging was the only thing that I felt like I had control over. Uh, in in my life and i turned to that and and then things went to the other extreme where okay i started to get better you know i lost my period due to my bulimia uh -huh. um and i lost my period too <laughs> 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 no, you know babies for us yeah <laughs> and then i just went to then just the extreme exercise um 
uh, under eating, extreme exercise, all these other things. Just again, to another way to just control my life in some aspect. So, so shit. Like, I just want to cut you off because like, there's so much and I'm sorry to cut you off, but I, I had to like, there's just so much to digest there. Like that's, that's incredible. Right. It's, and, and, and <laughs> but here's the thing is that everyone's listening or watching right now and they're like, okay, all of the shit's happening. All right. So why are you sitting here right now? So like, who are you today? Um, I'm somebody who has fucking control over my life and Ooh. I, and uh, who I want to impact and why is because I wouldn't wish what I went through upon my worst enemy for sure. Like feeling that low and feeling that worthless and feeling like you literally don't have a purpose in your life. And yeah. I wouldn't wish what I went through or what I felt upon my worst enemy. And it's now putting forth this positive inspirational message and giving people the tools and, and allowing people to just understand like they have the power to control every single thing in their mm. life. You know, you are everything in your life is your fault. You know, like <laughs> it literally is like you have control of every single thing, whether your that thought. be your thoughts, your everything, just everything. So yeah. Wow. Heartstrings pulling boom, 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 beautiful woman, like all these things, guys contact her now. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 no. But that, that's so inspiring and maybe if you didn't watch the, the experience part of this YouTube video, um, if you are listening to our audio, she's like super, super knowledgeable in gut health. Because I fucked my, my gut up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I love how she just says the word fucked. Just like fuck. I just fucked it up. It's enthusiasm. So unf- it's passion. It's- there you go. So if anyone's listening they're like, yo, whoa, whoa, Brennan, can't watch this again. Oh, wow. Oh, oh. You, you know, like, <laughs> like you just accept what the, the truth is. Like, Honestly, actually, I want to say this really quick. Go, go right ahead. If, if cursing bothers you and like, like if you're, cur- right, you could do the middle finger. If, if cursing bothers you and me saying fuck really pisses you off and just makes you so uncomfortable, I want you to literally ask yourself why. Is it me? Is it that I'm not wearing prescribed glasses? Is it the fact that like I have so many bars of soap in my closet? Like. If it, no, in all honesty, like if the word fuck is bothering you so much, check in with it, check in with it. Like, what does it mean for you? What does it mean to you? Cause when I say the word fuck, I'm like, oh, good morning, good morning. <laughs> you know, like I'm so excited. I'm so enthusiastic. I'm so passionate. And you know, what's funny. I stuffed that away from myself for the longest time. Oh, me too. I didn't say the word F U C K. Even I was about to not even say it <laughs> like for six and a half years. On, on, all, media. on all of my social media. So check in with that. And that also relates to your whole story and like giving into what the, what your mind was telling you, like what was good, what was bad, like and how other to, people, how, yeah, with, with everything. And like you kept on combating it. So with that being said, where you are now, gut health and everything that, that you've been standing for, what does it take for you to not go back to that old you and to dig into that? That bullshit, that victim story, that everything that you were going through, what does it take today? I think now compared to where I was, I, I'm authentically myself now, you know, and I feel so good. Um, it just showing up for not only myself, but the people in my life. And I, I think just over through this time, aside from myself, just I wasn't showing up for anybody else in my life. My, mm. my parents, my friends, my family, um, because of the shit that I was putting myself through. Right. And I think because I really stepped back and, and allowed myself to understand the value of their relationships in my life and what they mean to me. It's like, not only do I not want to let myself down and, and reverting back to those ways, but I can't let these people, my, my, my friends down, my family down, you down, K- Katrina down, you know, my, my parents, whatever. Um, and going back to my old habits. So it's, it's kind of like a sense of accountability per se, you know, just understanding the value of the love around you. And it's like, well, I, I need to show up for these people. So why? Yeah, but hold on. You need to show up for yourself right, first and as foremost. Well. Like the, no, not just as well. Like you need, you will show up for other people the second you start showing up for yourself. And there's no bullshit behind it. It's like, I'm telling you, if you don't go and get your workout in the days that you're supposed to get your workout in, how the fuck are you going to go train people on the level with the value that you truly want to give them and tell them, hey, work out every day. Like, make sure you're following this structure. Make sure you're following this program. You know, like, show up for yourself. Create you. That's what create you is all about. Yeah. You know, your experience is really your life. Like, everything in your life is an experience. 
and it's all creating you at the same time, every single moment. And to be honest, you were created when you were born. You know what I mean? Your parents were created when they were born. Your brother, your sister, everyone around you were created when they were born. It's just seeing it. Mm. It's seeing the beauty. It's seeing the joyfulness. It's seeing everything that each person in front of us was born with. It's just allowing it too, because right, because we, we all disallow it and we suppress it, regardless of you know, because your situation, societal views, yourself, yep. your ego, whatever. We all have, we're all created. You know, we have all of those amazing things that makes us us, but we suppress it and we push that shit down. Yeah. So you, know? you so you're created, and and that's the main thing is I I want I want you to make sure you know that, and also as you and I know you know a lot of this. And you're working on a lot in your life, which is beautiful. Like if you're not working and you're not progressing, you're dying. You're dying every fucking second. So and and that's beautiful. So let's shift, because now we have the little motivation. Like, ooh, ooh, yeah, let's we're go. badasses, motherfucker. Twerk. Okay. <laughs> I, I actually talk about twerking on every single episode. I've noticed that. It's very interesting. Mm. Wait, did we come to the conclusion that you can shake your ass? Or I, you can't. I really can. You can. Oh, one hundred percent. Shit, dude. I. Shake it. Can, Shake I that can, ass. Hold on. I, I can straight up. Mm. Shake it. Okay. All right. Done. All right. <laughs> That's you like know a what six, I, six out of ten. You know what I look six like? Out of 10, guys. You know what I look like? By the way, if you weren't watching on YouTube, I just twerked a little bit. I literally I looked like twerking. that guy. Okay, hold on. <laughs> I looked like that guy, that gif on the Instagram. You know, like the, the guy that's just like with his butt. <laughs> I think he's like a little turtle. A little thing. turtle a little, thing. <laughs> yeah. Little lizard. No, that was ten out of ten. Subscribe now. Six, um six. so let's shift a little bit. Let's really <laughs> let's really think uh, like deep into nutrition yeah. and and gut health and stuff you know where do you see people lacking focus in their diets like where do you think people really go off path and and find themselves in a rut or find themselves losing too much weight and really not being healthy or gaining too much fat like where do you see that common occurrence with gut health and, and food intake and everything? I think it's, it's, it's a lot of it's just emotions. You know, people know what's healthy for them. People know what's good for them. People know how to get healthy or get fit. I think it's just nobody, not nobody. Um, it's very difficult to cope with your emotions. So people either turn to food or don't eat anything. Right. And I think that that's the biggest thing is, is, um, either not educated enough or, I think that's what it might be. Just, just knowing the, the true way to cope with our emotions. Like we're never taught that. Uh, so the easy thing oftentimes is to turn to food. And it's oftentimes food that we know isn't good for us. Everybody knows what's healthy, what isn't healthy. But it's turning to the foods that we know aren't the best for us. And that it's just a cycle because we get upset. We get emotional. We turn to pizza. We know that the pizza uh, I, isn't good uh, for us. I like pizza, though. We turn to frozen bad DiGiorno pizza, okay. not fresh pizza. Okay. Cool. <laughs> we turn to those things. We make ourselves feel guilty and upset about having those things. And then it goes again. And we get more upset, turn to food, get upset. And in turn, I'm a stress eater. So am I, you know, and it's just knowing like, okay, when I'm stressed, like I need to get out of the fucking kitchen. Otherwise I'll binge. You or, know? or, or could we just maybe have an alternative, like some type right. of food or like have a cutoff? Like, okay, you can have like a, a, a handful of, of goldfish every day. That's okay. Like that, that's like how, how many calories is that? Like 40 calories, 30 calories or whatever, a handful of, of goldfish. And then move on. Is is that okay? Or I think that depends on person for sure. Because okay. at least for myself, sometimes like everybody has their trigger foods. I, I think, especially when it comes to somebody from with an eating disorder, you know, binging and purging. Like everybody has their trigger foods. Those foods that you literally cannot stop eating. You know, so there are some foods. What's one for you? Um, peanut butter. No shit. Cookies. I fuck with peanut butter and, and, and peanut butter better. cookies. Just just cookies. Like, okay. Like, Fresh homemade chocolate chip cookies. <laughs> oh shit! Fuck, they stop, yeah, stop playing with me. Stop playing with my emotions. And like warm, <laughs> freshly cooked rice. That's like something Re that I would stay in the kitchen and binge on. Yeah. Basmati. Um, jasmine. Mm. Mm, so yeah. good. Yeah, but those are the things that I know. I've gotten better. I'm able to have them in the house now. Yeah. But I used to not even be able to have a bite or like a handful of goldfish or whatever because I would have the whole entire bag. So it, it depends where your specific shit. relation is at, relationship is at with food. Um, as to the extent that you're able to have that moderation and, you know, if your gut's not in a good place, maybe you can't really have a cookie every single day, you know? So it, it really is per yeah, individual and, and where you're at with your relationship with food. Okay. So help me, help me help you. It's a song. I think, I think it is now. Is it? Yeah. Right now. Um, I have, 
So like if I go and get a box of cookies, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna have one. And I literally eat the whole thing. I'm like, oh, that wasn't that many calories. I'm not gonna even look at the numbers on the back of it. Like, to be honest, I'm in good shape, right? I I exercise a lot, I'm lean, I look good, I think, I I know. So like from that point of view, I'm like, oh, it's okay. I'm gonna have a whole fucking box of cookies. And then the next day I'll have like, I'll eat this, or the next day I'll eat that, or this or that. Like, how can I combat that? Like, what can I do? How do I create that discipline? How do I create that habit of not eating the bullshit? I think the biggest thing in any change that you're making is recognizing how you're showing up or like what that fault is. So if you're just doing it every single day and you're not even realizing, well, then you're not really in a place to change, you know? Oh, I realize it. So you realize it. So I think the biggest thing to do is you need to have somebody else tell you. And that's, I think, the value in coaching and friendships and things like that is is like, listen, Brendan, like if you want to look a certain way, if you want to feel this way, like you need to stop eating so many fucking cookies, you know? And and you text me every day? Brendan, how many cookies have you had today? That's a very interesting question. I've had zero cookies. So let's keep keep (laughs) it. But I'm going to have a pizza later. (laughs) Because I think that's what it is, is, is I think at least what I was lacking in my life for the longest time is were those relationships and those people to tell me straight up how I'm showing up or like what I'm doing wrong or things like that. Like I Mm. never used to have those relationships, but I think in this case, you know, when, um, you're showing up a certain way, you want to change, you know what you're doing, but it's so hard for yourself to create that discipline. Well, that's when you reach out to other people, you know, that's when you share. This is beautiful because you're tapping into something. And by the way, thank you. Thank you. Now that you're going to be texting me and you've taken on that uh, cookie responsibility. Yeah. That's cookie responsibility. That's beautiful. What you're saying Because if you think that you're surrounded by assholes, they're most likely, more times than not, real friends, real fucking friends. And the assholes that are standing for you and that are saying, hey, clean up after yourself. Hey, don't eat that. Hey, don't do this. You really shouldn't do that. Whoa, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? This is your vision. This is your goals. And you're saying, you're a fucking asshole. Like, why are you talking to me like that? I don't want you in my life. You're pushing away your success. You're pushing away your whole vision and everything you've set out for. So how do you surround yourself with those people? How do you recognize those things in your life, especially even with eating and, and, and losing fat or gaining weight or whatever it is? Like, how do you even recognize that? For the longest time, I didn't, you know, I, um, I didn't have, I feel like I had a lot of people like wrapped around my finger, you know, because I was always getting, I was getting praised always, you know what I mean? And I was, I wasn't growing. Right. Um, and because of that, like I was in a relationship for X amount of time because nobody was telling me that that wasn't good for me, even though I convinced myself that it was, and I wasn't growing in my business. I wasn't growing any way. And I felt so stuck. I felt so stagnant. And I feel like you just know when you finally have those right people around you and you, you oftentimes have to step outside of your own comfort zone to find those people. They're right. not just going to come to you. But the second you came in my life, all this shit started happening to me, you know, <laughs> like, yeah, not, yeah, you know that's I mean? true. Yeah, I'm, the, I, 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 I stand for you. Right. And I never had that. Mm. And not even my parents, not even my, clo- my closest friends. I mean, they're still my, some of my best friends, but the people who in my life who actually are those assholes to me, you know, you're, I mean, well, you know what I mean? Whoa, in the whoa, context whoa, whoa. of what we were talking about, you're an asshole sometimes, but it's yeah, good. That's true. But it's good. Cause they need that. I need somebody reminding me of my goals and standing for me and, and making sure I'm in the direction of what I'm fu- going to say I'm, I'm going to do, you know, and not somebody who's just going to yes me to death. That's not what I, a what yes anybody, man or woman. Right. I'm, you know, the way I look at it is I'm willing to go there with you. I'm willing to go there with anyone because I truly see what you're capable of. And if that causes you to hate me in the process, but you leave with your vision, so be it. Job done. But here's the thing. One thing that I'm working through is how to establish both. And it comes down to communication. And it's communication even with yourself. And that's also associated with gut health. And that's associated, like your gut is connected to your brain yeah. in so many different ways. Oh, yeah. And like, are you, are you stuffing yourself down with so many fucking carbs of like whole wheat pasta? Or are you having your proper servings throughout the day and making sure that you're exercising right and not only having a healthy gut and putting in good foods every single day, but also working up there, upstairs. So let me ask you, when it comes to nutrition, how much of it is the meditation of your own mind, like calming your own mind and really creating that discipline and that habit, like 
Where does that come from? Do you do anything to work on your mind so that it's easier to eat like properly and everything like that? I think it's more so the food that controls your mind. 100%, mm. whether that be the actual chemistry of, of the food or just the positive and neg negative feedback you give yourself. You know what I mean? Um, so for example, I'm going to feel a lot better when I eat whole nutrient dense foods. I get mental clarity. Um, I show up better for the people in my life. I succeed in my business. I show up for my clients and in turn, that makes me feel good, mm. you know, or if I know I'm choosing healthy foods, I feel good. I know I'm doing something good for myself. Uh, rather than if I were to choose cookies, I not only would feel better, poorly physically but mentally i would feel foggy i wouldn't be showing up how i how i know that i should be showing up and i have that guilt of like fuck i should have had this prepped meal that i already had instead of the cookie so it's not only physical it's it's just the the feedback of it i think too but what if most of us are just used to and we have the habit that i'm fucking foggy every day and i don't even realize i'm foggy it's like people that don't even know that they need glasses until they put on glasses and they're like whoa i can see clearly now I can see clearly now. You, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So like, where are those lenses for us when it comes to nutrition? Like, where, where, do the, where does it start? Look, look, when I started on my journey of transforming me, I was like, I went through this, the, the MITT program, which you're going through as well. Mastery and Transformational Training, if anyone wants to, to learn more about it. It's in LA and a couple places. But I went through like the first part of it and I was like, I recognized it and I was like, but what the, f okay, I recognize it. What the fuck do I do now? So like, let's talk over some strategies that people can really take advantage of to get as lean as they've always wanted to, it could even be with weights and, and their PRs and their personal records, even relationships. Where does it start? What are some things that we can give people that are listening or watching right now that can propel them forward and accomplish the things that they want in their life? and create those habits and the discipline and the consistency to right. get there. So I think even just laying the basic foundation of most of us, we don't sleep, we don't drink water, we don't plan out our meals ahead of time, we go a long time without eating. So building that foundation of habits is key. That's like the basic, you know what I mean? It's increase your water intake, eat slowly, prioritize your oh, sleep, shit, eat slowly. Go increase your movement, go for walks, and then you're gonna be like, oh shit, like I feel good. I feel really good, like after doing these basic things. Okay, you know? so, so so that's the first thing. Drink a, a lot taste. more water. So you know, it doesn't have to be a gallon, right? It can be three quarters of a gallon or whatever. Start like, with water right when you wake up. Yeah, a full glass of water. Full glass of warm water. Add some lemon if you want to take things to the next What does the step. lemon do? What is the... Um, it basically helps your digestion as it creates an acidity, the, an acidic pH in your stomach, which mm. helps the digestion. That affects your thing. liver as well and, and also your whole digestive tract, right? Everything. Just a ah. little bit of lemon can go a long way when it comes to just helping your digestion. Should I squirt it in my eyes too or no? Is that not? Everywhere. Interesting. Squirt that lemon everywhere. Next, next, <laughs> never mind. I'm not going to say anything else. Unfiltered, but a little bit filtered. <laughs> so, okay. So water, sleeping properly. Yeah. Like even like, for example, nighttime routine, get your phone out of your fucking room. You know, take your phone out. Interesting. Yeah. Or that's not me. Shut down your phone an hour before you go to sleep. Like just quality of sleep will increase your energy, will increase your digestion. All of these things, just getting an adequate amount of sleep. Just little Isn't things. it interesting that everything like... It's all connected. It, it's all connected, but it also it always starts with us waking up. Like, like notice this for a second. When we were born, we almost like woke up to the world. Like we were born as we had this, this, and this now. Like we started here. When you wake up during the day, like at the beginning of the day, you wake up up and you're planning yourself for the whole day you have things that you're going to come across right and we always wake up usually generally stress-free and it's just like ah like a fresh oh start. shit i got this i got this oh shit i got this i got this and it's like it's like our day our 24 hours is so similar or while we're awake to when we were babies and in the womb and coming out of the womb right because like we're just finally awake so when we look at that where else can we really, really dive into the nutrition aspect of, of really succeeding with all of our goals? Like we, we, we got started with our morning routine, right? That's like life. It's like when we were growing up, we were learning from our mom and our dad and we learned how to walk, right? That's like, the, that's like the foundation. It's the foundation of our lives, our future. So from that standpoint and from that viewpoint, 
after you wake up and you have the good chug of water and you do have something a little bit good in your system, what else is there to help us get started walking and then run throughout our day with a lot of joyous like feelings and excitement? Yeah, like set your intentions. Like know what you're accomplishing that day. You know, like as a child, like I, I feel like I remember when I was younger, it's like, okay, I would go to school. I would have sports. I would have this. There was some sort of structure and routine to my day. You know, there was something I like planned out and structured out. And in turn, like I had goals for the day. I had intentions for the day. Whereas if you just go out, go throughout the day, just without a plan or just this and that, you feel very scatterbrained. You don't feel very organized. Your meals won't be in place. You won't mm. have those intentions, you know? So just being structured and knowing what you're accomplishing that day, why you're accomplishing it. And, and checking in with yourself from time to time to make sure that you're on, on track, I think is super important. Right. So, okay. So even words of affirmation and setting your intention list for the day, what am I going to get done? That comes into a calendar. So now we're, now we're, we're getting a little jog in, right? right. This is like, remember we're, we're, this is the, the representation of life in a, in a day's pace, right? So we wake up, we have our water, we have everything. We're starting to eat a little bit healthier. We know when our meals are coming. We start jogging a little bit. We're understanding, okay, we get some exercise in for the day. Now we have to go to the work, the job that we fucking hate. What do we do? It's all your intention or rather your perspective of the situation. Do you hate it? Do you have a choice? Yeah, everything's a fucking choice. Right. You can go to that job and you can say that you hate it and you can hate your boss and you can not be productive and you can just hate your life, not want to go home to your wife that day. Or you can go to that job and say, this job is providing for my family. This job is providing me the life that I want it to. And I'm going to show up 110% because I'm choosing to be here right now. Right. It's my choice. So either I can choose to have a good day at work. I can choose my family. I can choose myself. I can choose my body. I can choose my health. Or I can be miserable. I can be upset. I can play the victim. I can, you know what I mean? It's the same day, but two different perspectives. So which one are you going to choose? Mm, juicy shit. I like that. Okay. So everything is going well. My life, like my vision, everything's coming together. Like in this 20, remember we're, we're associating this with when you're a baby and you're starting to learn how to walk, you're jogging now, now you're going into school and now you're in your teenage years and now that party comes along, right? And now you're at work and you're having such a great day and all of a sudden, boom, something hits you out of nowhere some news, something you get invited to go out and party with your friends, something comes out of nowhere and you're like, oh shit, big decision time. What do you do? You trust yourself. Whatever that decision is, you trust the decision that you made, whether it be the right one or the wrong one, you're going to learn something from either. I think whether it's that high school party, right? Maybe you weren't supposed to go, but you went and one of your friends overdosed, you know, and they died. Well, you chose to go to that party. You witnessed that happen and you can play the victim from that situation. You can say that like, I, I fucked up. I can't believe I did this. Like I let them, this happen to them. All these other things you can learn from that situation, make an impact in other people's lives because of the shit that you saw at that party, you know, or you can play the victim. So even if it's a decision at work, you know, you fucked up with your boss, you know, and now you got calls into their office. You have to make a big business decision and you're scared and you don't know if you're going to make the right one and all these things. Right. But regardless of your decision, it's your choice and you're going to learn from either one, I think, right. and, and can apply it anywhere. Right. So, so basically what you're saying and to summarize that part is, Hey, make a decision, choose. And whatever comes from each decision, whether it is like, Hey, no, go home and get your meals ready for the next day or whatever and relax or going out and celebrating or, uh, if that's something bad happened, it's all about the mindset of that new experience that is created. Right. Yes. And so I would like to say something and chime in a little bit on that. When you are going through something that is that like significant or it's like, whoa, what, what, what's going on? I just got invited to a party. Like I don't party, but I really want to go party. I want to go drink, really look at whether or not it's going to ev like take your vision to the next level. Is it going to establish your vision? Is it going to bring more clarity to your vision? And when you look at it from a different perspective like that, you're like, hey, all right, if I do go to this party, I know that this person, this person, and this person is going to go there. I am going to drink, but you know what? I'm not going to drink as much. I'm going to go there for more of the experience of being with friends. 
and I know I'm going to see this person, this person, this person. Maybe I could pick their brains a little bit or like look at the, the positives from both and then make the decision. But never, never regret your decision. Right. I think a lot of it, too, is our lack of checking in with ourselves. You know, it's like, for example, we don't really take things next level when it comes to ourselves and our goals. Um, right. Like, for example, you know, my I'm in prep, for example. I'm going to prep for a bodybuilding show. I get asked to go out. You know, I would think like, okay, I have to get in my meals. I have to do this. So should I go out? Is that conducive to my goals? Is this going to set me back? And if, so all, all these questions are going through my brain. But if this person, for example, might just have a fat loss goal, they get asked to go out. Fuck yeah. Let's go. Yeah. They don't think. They yeah, don't yeah, think yeah. like, what are, what are, what's going to happen when I go out? How am I going to feel the next day? How's my digestion going to look? How is my sleep going to So work? just meditate with it is what you're saying. Yes. Take Take time. To analyze the situation. How is yeah. it going to affect me? How is it going to affect my vision? How is it going to affect my goals rather than just like acting on impulse? It's like a know? tattoo. It's yes. like you're like, oh shit, yo, I want that tattoo. That I want those butt cheeks on my bicep. Like those things are so weak. I want mom written across I my chest. I want mom written across <laughs> my chest. Hey, 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 respect. If you have that across your chest, respect. But the point is give it time. Yes. And sometimes it's not even just 24 hours. Look, sometimes it takes a month. Sometimes it takes three months. Like if you're in a relationship and you're questioning a relationship or whatever it is, check in with that before you just fucking break up with the person. Really think it through. Maybe test things out. Go just like don't just go through the motions. Really put a lot of work into it because it could actually be something that's going on with you and not the other person. And it's the same thing with your food and, and all of your relationships, all your relationships, right? Because relationships is life. Is life. Our life is our relationships. Life is in our favor. <laughs> so, okay. So we're moving along and now we're, we're going into, well, you know, you said you're already 21, so that's cool. But now we're getting into our 20s and we're getting into the real world and life's getting serious. You know, like we got to figure shit out. And this is, again, in relation to our 24-hour day. And we're done with work, right? It's the same feeling. You're done with work. You really like, this is like the, the big time part of your life. It, like, hey, from 5 p.m. until 7 p.m., you have a choice. You're hungry. You're tired. You've been through the dog fight. You've been through high school. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What do we do now <laughs> when we're like, oh, I really want that Snicker bar because I want the Snicker bar because... It brings me that feeling of like, oh, wow, that was great. You know, popped it in my head. The second you said that is because I'm still going through this part of my life. And I think a lot of my following and everyone can relate when you comparing it to life, when you start getting in your 20s, mid 20s, right after college, you start questioning your whole fucking life. Yeah. Did I did I go to school for the right thing? Did I am I am I at the right job? Am I at the right place? And the thing that's comfortable is that job is that degree is that snickers bar that's what's comfortable that's what you know that's yeah. what you know gluten free though <laughs> <It's gluten-free. laughs> <laughs> that's what you know is like that job or that career or those things that you initially set out to do when you're in your 20s and figuring those things out that's what's comfortable for you and that's what that snickers bar is yeah but if you are ambitious and you have a life created for your that you want for yourself this vision of just this, this incredible life that's bigger than that Snickers bar, mm. you know, and it's now stepping outside of that comfort zone and taking different steps to get to that vision, putting down the Snickers bar and going for a jog instead, you know, that that's what's going to bring your vision to life and, and allow you to just feel fulfilled. So at least comparing it, that Snickers bar to life and like that goes hand in hand because both that, are comfortable. And, and, and that's something similar that you do with your clients, right? Like you give them those type of tips like, hey, yeah, I know you want a cheat meal. I know you want this, but like really look at your goal and look at like, hey, you want to lose a pound of fat for like in these two weeks or per week or whatever it is, right? So, so really just either going for a walk, doing something that's going to de- like, that's a hobby. Maybe go play guitar. Maybe go do uh, some yoga. Do something active or eat something that's an alternative to a Snickers bar. It could be, like I said, a gluten-free Snickers bar. No, I'm kidding. Don't do that. <laughs> but like in reality, you can you can find alternatives and find it that way, and it won't be as bad. Okay, so so that's our that's our stretch. But now, it's not done. Now we're going into nighttime, right? It's past dinner. We've had a good dinner. We're focused. We're like, mm, 
And now we're into the like the home stretch. We're in our 40s. Midlife crisis. Here it is. It's we're about to go to sleep and we're fucking hungry. And I'm talking about I want Cheerios, I want Nutella, I want peanut butter, I want a little bit of cookies on top of that, and then maybe drizzle some brown sugar on that bitch. <laughs> and th- should I not say on that bitch? On that bitch. Okay, cool. Oh, yeah. I'm safe. Put it on. J- safe. On the bitch. Safe. It's so like, <laughs> what do you do in that scenario? So what I usually midlife crisis. Remember. So after you eat dinner, you know, a, a good couple hours before bedtime, you should be fasting. You shouldn't be eating before dinner. So for the quality of sleep. So or you now, mean before sleep? You shouldn't before be, sleep. Okay. You shouldn't be eating. And now you're at this midlife crisis. You're questioning everything in your life. You're like, oh my god, I'm so hungry. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What, if, is everything I'm doing right? Type of thing. You have to assure yourself. That's when you take your your notebook back open. You write down your gratitude, everything that good that happened to you in that day. You recognize all of the good you did for yourself that day. You recognize mm. all the positive things you did for yourself. You recognize wow. where you're at with your goals, what tomorrow's goals are, what your ambitions are for tomorrow, what you're going to achieve for tomorrow. It's recognizing that at nighttime. And that's where your midlife crisis comes. It's why are you in a crisis? You accomplish all these fucking things from the age of zero to 40. Yeah, that's fucking amazing. So you have to recognize yourself and appreciate yourself what you accomplished that day just like what you accomplished through your entire life in your midlife crisis what are you appreciating yourself that you did that day and what are you gonna do tomorrow that's what you need wow. to recognize at nighttime just go to sleep and then you can go to sleep just go to just fucking sleep. go to sleep appreciate yourself you know give yourself that gratitude that appreciation that love and then go to sleep isn't that interesting that how we kind of design this structure to this this podcast is like now you're past your midlife crisis and you're like fulfilled and you're going to sleep now, but it's not like you're you're not dying at 53. Like guys, <laughs> I mean, let's be real. Nice. You, you, I believe in you, <laughs> but like in, in all in, in all actuality, it's it's okay. Now you're in your 50s, and you're like, wow, I've accomplished a lot in my life. And it's like right before bed, you're like, hmm, I had a good day, a good fucking day. And then because you said that tomorrow's gonna be a good day too, you're gonna wake up and be like, fuck yeah, yesterday was great. Today's gonna be even better. So, you know what I'm getting from this. To create you, it all starts with how you get up in the morning. It all starts there. But here's the thing. All these layers have packed on day after day after day after day after day. And just like we say, in order to get back to our joyous self, we need to peel back the layers. The onion. The onion. That we put on our shish kebabs before. Yeah, those were delicious. (laughs) So when we're relating it to that, All you got to do is create the habit now and don't wait. And it's going to be tough the first day. It's going to be tough the second day. It's going to be a little less tough the third day. And it's going to be fucking hard as hell the fourth day. But here's the thing. You'll see as you keep on working on all these goals, nutrition wise, all the way up to relationships, everything. Remember, everything's relationships. You're going to see it's starting to dwindle less and less and less. You know, it's like a lot of people that did cryptocurrency. It like slowly crept up and it was making more money, more money. And all of a sudden shot up and they were winners, right? Let's not talk about the downfall. Let's not talk about that. But like when we think about it in that sense, our lives are the same way. If we're, if we're working towards something, it's slow, slow, slow. All of a sudden it clicks and everything is like, boom, that's what's happening in my life. Is it with you? You just have to take your power back. You have the power and we just get so caught up in the motions and get so caught up in instant gratification of things and short term satisfaction that we don't think long term. We get we lost our power right to society, to these old habits that we built, this old routine. We just have to take our power back and take a stand for ourselves and what we actually want in our lives. And you can recognize that those changes aren't so bad to make. Right. You know. Wow. Wow. So much juice. So much, so moist. So much lemon juice. There's so much moistness in this. This is beautiful. It's beautiful. All right. So let let me shift the let me shift this uh, conversation a little bit. Would you rather have blackberries or blueberries? Blueberries. Why? I like them. The taste better. Interesting. How about you? It's not about the color. No. Mm. Why are you trying to call me racist? Oh. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> setting me up to lose, would you? Well, Alexa? do you like blackberries or blueberries? You know what? I like both because I don't mm. discriminate. 
<laughs> so now I'm still a racist. Got him. Got him. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about some foods that that people can be consuming to really make sure that they're they're following a healthy diet and really just in tune with their the results that they're they're looking for their vision. So, um, what are some vegetables that you recommend? Let's just go with like leafy greens like what type of leafy greens like? actually i'm gonna actually shift this in a different direction more so foods that oh, you shit. should be avoiding because food good foods look differently for everybody <sighs> okay i'm sorry no nah, that's cool <laughs> like there's definitely everybody has their different good foods like how they affect you how they affect me like spinach might affect me differently than it affects you like it's a quote good food but i think there's universally foods that affect everybody negatively so it'd make more sense to talk about the ones to avoid right okay yeah no totally like <laughs> Great your experience, host. Yeah. My name is Alexis Stanko. <laughs> go ahead. Bye, Brennan. Gotta go. <laughs> gotta go. Gotta go. Um, so definitely ones to avoid would be just processed flowers um, and processed wheat, processed soy, things like that. Those are oftentimes so. Very like what examples? Like 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 cereal, or? cereal, oh, shit. white bread. What about Cheerios though. Mm. No. Mm. Just processed wheat is is just inflammatory. So the reason a, a lot of times we're using gluten and wheat and things like that are, are inflammatory to us is just because our body hasn't, uh, evolutionarily speaking, hasn't caught up to the industrial rev revolution that occurred. Yeah, of what's been pr processed. Yeah. Um. So that's. But some people it's fine. Some like people Like some people it works. they can they, it works fine for them. Right. And we can we can take that into account. Okay. So we like all that uh, wheat flowers and, gluten, and stuff. Processed flowers. A lot of it. Like. He, she's talking about a lot of it. Like you have some gluten sometimes. I have some gluten sometimes. Right. But I shit my brains out. But. <laughs> on a day to day basis, you know, it, it, it's oftentimes inflammatory. A lot of times you'll notice some brain frog, frog, ribbit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ribbit. <laughs> so, Was that a rabbit or a ribbit? You can, yeah, whatever you want it, whatever. What type of noise does a rabbit make? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I don't know. It's if like, anybody knows in the like, comment section, please, please like, let us know. Ribbit. Ribbit, ribbit. No, I don't think a, a rabbit has a oh, noise. A rabbit? I think they're like. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, Little mouse card. or mice? Mice. Mm, multiple. Huh. Mice. Okay. Hey, so, so <laughs> you see how I like shift shit all the time. So okay. So you have like the all that wheat and all that stuff. Okay. What other things should we kind of stay away from? Because I yo, I, I actually I don't. This isn't me. But like yo, I like my hot chocolate. Hey, like, yeah, during the winter or like, hey, I really like um, vitamin water. It's vitamins. It's vitamin water. Like, why not? Like, what are some other things that, that we should avoid? Sugar. Sugar is definitely one. that. What does that look like, though? What does sugar look like? Because for me, honestly, I'm not going to lie. Like, I look at sugar. and I'm like, someone's like, don't eat fruit. I'm like, what the fuck off? Like, I, I like fruit. I, fruit's good for me. Right. You know, like from that perspective, I'm not a genius with nutrition. I understand it some. But tell me, tell me more about sugar and like what to avoid. Yeah, so processed sugar versus like fruit from sugar. You have vitamins, minerals, fiber in fruit. So that's going to change the response of the sugar in your body. You know, you're providing your body all of these nutrients and vitamins and, and the fiber prevents the huge spike in insulin and all of those things. Whereas processed sugar, it, it feeds your negative cells, cancer cells. It it fuels the negative, um, rather the, the, the bad enzymes in your stomach mm. um just as processed sugar is inflammatory so what does that look like what's processed like give us examples of some like white food. sugar brown sugar um cereals hot chocolate oftentimes <gasps> sorry Gosh. cookies yeah. cakes things like that okay. have that processed sugar um what else okay so you have so we have sugars stay away from processed sugars obviously mm -hmm. um what's something is there anything that you could think of that's like more common that we don't stay away from that we don't even realize that we're consuming every single day? What about oils? Oils. Oh, yeah. So inflammatory oils. So uh, just the way that they're processed, such as vegetable oils, canola oils. And their burning point, right? Their burning their point burning is a points. big part of it. Right. And just the, the way that they're processed, you have to think too, these oils are being extracted from, for example, vegetables, vegetable oil, canola oil, which is from corn, corn oil. There's no fat in in vegetables. You yeah. know what I mean? And and these things are just getting manipulated and pressed and processed to that's, extract this oh oil. Oh shit, that's some you know gold. I mean? to, to, to just get these oils. That's I not even it's it like not that. natural, right? So you have to like look at a carrot. Like is do you think there are a piece of corn? Like there's no fat in that. Get they're processed and manipulated and extracted to, to get this cheap oil that's used everywhere. It's inflammatory. It's not good for us. So what oil should we be consuming? So things like olive oil, you know, cold pressed uh, olive oil, avocado but oil. Specific olive oil. Like, hold on. Let's not Extra go too fast past this. Because like a lot of people will just grab a fucking 
Oh, look at that. We got olive oil here at uh, the Olive Garden. Let me just throw that on my... It's not actually a well-processed right. olive oil. It's not organic. It's not from a place that you really want to consume. Yeah. You know what's what really fucked up is actually with a lot of olive oils, they mix it with canola oil. So they'll call it olive oil, but then if you like looked at the ingredient label, it says canola oil and olive oil, like mix. Such so it's like... Bastards. 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 <laughs> but you want definitely your olive oil to be organic and, and stored in a dark container uh, so that it doesn't get oxidized. So when you purchase your olive oil, you obviously want it to be organic, cold pressed. So it's in this just... It's, and it's, it looks darker. It looks darker ah, and rich. Uh, and you want it stored in a dark container so that the light doesn't oxidize the oil. Um, that's going to be the best quality oil when, when you do that. Okay. Dinner. And then what other oils? Uh, uh, avocado we were, oil yeah. is great to cook with. has a super high smoke point or high cooking point. Um, so that's definitely... How about coconut oil? Is there mixed feelings with that? Because I because I know that the burning point's what, like 370 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that, or 375? It has a really high smoke point, but the issue is just the saturated fat in the coconut mm. oil. Um, everybody r responds differently to saturated fat. Um, there's a certain gene that um, you do or do not have that, that changes the way that your body responds to saturated oh, fat, whether it be... Actually, I have that. I, I actually have that. That, that you gene. respond poorly to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I took 23andMe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think I need to do that. Did you do it? No. 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 Yeah, I took it and uh, I have that gene. It's some gene. I don't know. My mom always calls me like every day. She's like, hey, Brennan, you got this gene. You got to switch Stop it up. Stop eating butter. She's like, Stop eating the peanut butter. <laughs> I'm like, No, mom. I love the peanut butter though. <laughs> but, but, you know, like, okay, so you have all those different oils. Yeah, so we, we've talked about all these like different things to stay away from. Really, the three top things sugar oils that are in your foods and then also what was the last one process wheat, wheat process wheat gluten, and, yeah gluten and all that shit so man what type of water should we drink you know if we have like alkaline water we got the ph we got the little sunflower water we got this water we have like this sparkling water like mm -hmm. what minerals this that water like it, i get confused as hell to be honest when there's so many different waters so, like which one should we consume mm -hmm. I think just definitely just being conscious of the water that you have access to. You know, oftentimes just like tap water has chlorine and chemicals. Mm. Um, so obviously you, you don't want to be drinking that, uh, you know, as little as you can. Um, but when it comes to like the pH water and all these things like that, uh, it's great. But for the average person, you might not have access to that, you know. So the reality is just get clean, pure water, um, just natural spring water. Um, do the best you can to just get clean, pure water, not from tap. So I shouldn't go to my backyard in the lake and just start drinking from my lake. Stick a straw in. You know what's funny? Oh my gosh, this is great. This is fantastic. <laughs> so there's this thing, sorry I get super excited. There's this thing, this like, if you're ever in trouble, there's a straw. You stick it anywhere. You can even stick it in your own pee. Does it filter and you the water? It filters it. You can drink your own pee. Can you? I have been trying to do this what literally this my whole entire life. What is I am this? not even kidding. Go look it up. I don't I'm know where you are piss. right now. Yeah, you can drink your own piss. Why is that a desire of yours? I, oh, that's some interesting. That's an interesting. Wow. So we're going to end it. <laughs> no. <laughs> it but, but no, like, it, no, it wasn't always a desire. It was always like a thought like, oh, well, I could drink my own. Like, it sounds like a desire. When I was, okay. Well, gluten, peanut butter, cookies, Cookie. pizza. Hot it, but, but, you know, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love Alexa. She's awesome. Um, cool. Like, yeah, go check out that straw, like for sure. You, sponsor us. Sponsor, sponsor us. Sponsor create you. <laughs> create you. Let's go. Let's go. So, you you work with people every single day and on all this stuff, and we and you know we talked about like things just to, to avoid, and I think it's pretty self explanatory. What explanatory what to consume? It's like, hey, don't be an asshole to yourself. Like, if you know it's not good for you, eh, it's probably not good probably for not. you. And if you're listening to this podcast, I actually think that you're kind of health conscious a little bit. Um, and if you're not, eat a lot of vegetables, like, like focus on more vegetables, eat sweet potatoes, like don't eat too much ground beef, but I, it's, it's not portion control, portion that's, control that's thing. for me. I like wild game meats. Like I, I like, um, lamb. I like, uh, like even Cornish hen instead of regular chicken. That's also like a good alternative. I like, um, bison. That's a very lean, lean meat to, to consume and it's easy for me to digest, uh, just be conscious of it and also like you can try alternatives like cauliflower crust like we were talking about in the in the grocery yeah. store there's so many different ways so with when you train people you know like let's just say someone's listening right now and they're like they're just trying to get started what's a couple tips that you can give them hey like if you want to lose a few pounds like this is what you're going to do this do this like what would you say 
Yeah, I would say number one, just set the time. You know, for anything, you have time for everything. Everybody's biggest excuse typically is, oh, I don't have time. I'm too busy. Set aside time, commit to yourself and set aside time that you're going to go for a walk, that you're going to go to the gym, whether that be two or three days a week for a half an hour. Right. It's something, you know, you're, you're starting there. So I think honestly, number one, just make the time to prep, to shop, to cook, whatever. Make the time. And what's the second thing that you, that you could give us? So make time obviously is, is very, very important. But what, what would you say is the second most biggest important for a transformation? Make others aware of your goals. Oh, shit. Yeah, because everybody, I think, is in hiding trying to achieve something. And it's easy to convince yourself to not go to the gym that day or do anything like that when you're only checking in with yourself. Whereas if I were to let you know, like, hey, Brennan, this, I'm really committed to lose five pounds in the next month. You know, I'm going to the gym now three days a week. I'm really committed to do this. Now I have one person to check in with. I have one person holding me accountable, you know, so letting your family know like, hey, guys, like I'm really going to start prepping my food. I'm going to start prepping my meals like this means a lot to me. So I'd really appreciate your support. That's it. That's all you have to do. And then the universe starts to work in your favor because everybody knows of what you want to achieve and what you want to do. So you need to surround yourself with people that care about you and want you to succeed. Yes. You know, if people are like, hey, let's go eat, let's go eat, let's go eat. And they know for sure that you're trying, you have these goals, then you, know, you, you should most likely bring it up to them, communicate with them. And if it happens again and again and again, shift and, you know, maybe it's not, it's not the right time for them to be in your life and they can be in your life in, in other ways outside of food and all that stuff. Yeah. So that's, that's so big. And, and, and I'm so happy that you came on here. Like it was, this has been an incredible time. Now, before we go anywhere, I want to ask you a question. If you had a table a dinner table and it was like the most important day of the year and you had one opportunity to have three people sit down and have that beautiful dinner with you 15 course meal whatever it is a lot of talking is going to go on you're going to really get to know all of them who would you choose three people that you could you could have at your dinner table who would they be anybody anybody can they be alive or dead or anybody? I mean, if they're dead, they're not going to be able to talk too much, but like, like anybody. Like right to bring them back. Okay, fine. They can, they're coming back from the dead, walking of the dead. So I'd bring my great grandma. She passed away. She was my best friend growing up. I think to now be able to have a conversation with her as an adult and mm. really talk to her because she's survived World War II. She's gone through some wow. shit. She was just an extremely powerful, powerful woman. And to now be able to have like a real conversation with her as, as an adult would be, I would like give anything to do that. Okay. So your great, great grandmother, who else? My mom and my dad. Okay. Time out. No mom or dads in here. No family members. You have one dinner. Mm -hmm. You got to th think about like, think about everyone else in your life. Cause I know I would love to have my mom and my dad at my, that big, that big dinner. But at the same time, I wouldn't <laughs> just being honest. Like I would like specific people like i tell everyone like tony robbins gary v maybe logan paul maybe uh like john f kennedy sometimes like i have so many different ideas of who i would want there but like give me three people come on give me something juicy michael phelps oh you see how you're you see how you're opening up that's yeah. vulnerable who yeah. else michael phelps bob marley wow okay and who's the third person i thought, I thought there was three um the rock <laughs> oh, no, okay. This is very interesting. Really quick, Michael Phelps. Why? Um, because he is unapologetically himself, despite all the pressure that he has as a swimmer, and especially as a swimmer growing up, I always looked up to him. He's just an extremely um, ambitious, dedicated person. Very calm person. Yes. Notice that you're very calm. Okay, Michael Phelps. Who else? Bob Marley. Bob Marley. Why Bob Marley? Because of his power through impacting people through music and his words and just his energy, you know, just so his, good vibes. Yeah. Good. Vibes, You're also yeah. good vibes. It's very interesting. And number three, the, what's rock. Your third? the rock. Why the rock? I know why you tell me that. He's sexy. So. <laughs> 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 no, that's true. Yeah, I am. He, right. he <laughs> is so I, one thing I learned about him too, is when it comes to his fitness and his health and his dedication to himself, the first thing he does when he gets off a fucking airplane is go to the gym. Like he is so dedicated to himself and his goals. And he is just such a powerful person. And 
and and it just goes 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 and has so much going for him in his life and has achieved so much and i think he's just an incredible person to look up to wow so what i've gathered from this is that you invite you you forgot to invite me (laughs) (laughs) you can be our little server i'm literally (laughs) everyone's server (laughs) at least i'm there the chef but that's that's really inspirational that's incredible that those are your three people so if you're watching or listening right now who are those three people for you and if you've already been listening to the create you experience for a long time maybe you've already created that maybe you can create a new three set of people because you've grown since the last podcast or the podcast before that so good question thank you so much for coming on thank you this is exciting and not only will you see alexa now but you're going to see her quite often i think i want to definitely pick your brain with you does mm-hmm. that make sense no we're going to pick your brain with yourself i don't think that makes sense. i know it's a play on it's a play on words it's my way of being creative. I'm creating you. Create you. And you don't even notice it. Mm. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. No, but <laughs> I, I want to be able to pick different subjects and really dive in to so many different things, whether it's nutrition. We can get specific with nutrition, just create episodes oh, yeah. and stuff dive like that. In. And dive into just like life and relationships. Because you're also, you didn't even talk about your relationship with your previous fiance and that whole shebang, which we will get into What's that up? on another podcast. So- Thank you so much for joining us again, Alexa. Thank you. Where can they find you? Uh, so my Instagram is at Alexa Stanko Fit. Um, you can see me there. Hang out with me. Watch my stories. I she, cry a lot on my stories. You do not um, cry on your stories. <laughs> I make you cry on your stories. <laughs> you no. just make me cry in general. Oh my, Wow. He's the asshole. I'm showing life, up. I I'm showing up for her though. And, and, and <laughs> cool, cool. So definitely check check her out. She also has um, her own business. She does coaching. Um, you can just check out her Instagram to, to see what's going on with her businesses and everything that she's doing. So if you ever want any coaching to work on nutrition, anything from A to Z, some lower priced items all the way to, to bigger priced check items. Check out the daily scope. Yeah, yeah, definitely check out all of that. And um, yeah, thank you for coming on. Thank you for tuning in. If you're watching right now, I'm giving you a thumbs up, audio people. Um, I appreciate you so much. And I'm happy that you're here. I'm happy that you're taking the time to take the next step in your life and really showing up for yourself. Because if you don't create you, no one's going to create you. And if no one ever creates you and you're not creating yourself, then you're gonna live a life full of misery, pain, discomfort, and just complete lost. Just, you're gonna be lost every single day. It starts right now, it it started this morning. It starts now. So wake the fuck up now, today, right now. Make this the day that you were born and bring your fucking vision to life. You know you can make it happen. You know you can make it blossom. It all starts up here. So thank you for tuning in for yet another episode of the Create You Experience. Remember, you have those seven free gifts down in the description on YouTube or even in the show notes for the links. You get incredible products. I mean, I teach you how to build your business, the checklist. You get an ABBA program. You get like really cool stuff, how to lose fat, some meal plans, all this, all this cool stuff for free. Just leave a review on iTunes. That's all I ask. So again, thank you for tuning in for another episode of the Create You Experience. My name is Brendan. Thank you, Alexa, for joining us. And we'll see you next time. Peace. Right, I fell down, got up, I'm unbreakable Anything in my way, I'ma break through Lights, camera, action, take two Can't worry about what they do, you gotta create you